So there's been a massive back and forth on whether the M2 Pro and M2 Max are going to be based on the 3 nanometer process or the existing 5 nanometer process instead. We've seen benchmarks, we've seen reports, basically there's been a 50-50 chance of either being the case, but it seems we have a post-Christmas miracle because 3 nanometer chips are going to begin production this week and that means we could see the M2 Pro and the M2 Max adopt this process. So I know initially this report came from Digitimes and they're notorious for not being credible at all, but this has actually been verified now because basically the initial report said TSMC was going to have a ceremony that took place on the 29th of December to celebrate the fact they're going to begin producing 3 nanometer chips as soon as this week. Now in case you're wondering when I'm recording this, it's on the 29th of December and the ceremony has took place. The chairman spoke about 3 nanometer chips. And so yes, for once, Digitimes has been accurate and they've given us a legit report. Anyways, Digitimes report did say that Apple is going to be first in line to get these new chips and we should see the M2 Pro and the M2 Max, the A17 and the M3 being based on the 3 nanometer process. So yeah, if they're right about the ceremony, they're likely to be right about this. So yeah, that's pretty exciting news. Since like I've been saying for a while, these MacBooks are going to be simple chip refreshes and so everything relies on these performance upgrades being massive because if it's based on 5 nanometers once again and the chip upgrades are pretty minor for the most part, consumers won't buy this because you can now find the M1 variants for much less and the M2 models we know are going to be very similar for the most part apart from the chip. And so yes, to convince consumers to get these MacBooks, we need proper chip upgrades, and that's going to be the case with 3 nanometers. Now for those wondering, what about the benchmarks we saw on Geekbench? Are those not legit then? Well, if this report is true, then yeah, that could be the case. Obviously, as with any reports, take everything you see with a grain of salt. But yes, I'm inclined to believe those benchmarks are now completely false. We should see much bigger upgrades. Now, by the way, in case you're wondering, these will be produced at TSMC's Taiwan plants. Though in the future, we could see chips produced at the Arizona plant that's being currently produced. And I also want to mention the chairman actually specifically said we could see better performance with these new chips while using 35% less power, which is very exciting news because battery life with the M1 Pro and M1 Max MacBooks were not that great compared to the regular M1 models, especially with the 14 inch. And so if Apple gives us better performance and also better efficiency and battery life, that's going to be a winning combo for these Macs. And so yes, I'm pretty hyped about these machines. Now, of course, the MacBooks are not the only Macs getting this. We should also see an M2 Pro Mac Mini launch and these should be unveiled at the March event. CS, so yes, pretty excited for these upgrades. But now let's delve into your questions. So Eric says, do you think the next iPad with OLED screens will be more powerful than the MacBook 2024? Now, I'm not exactly sure what you mean by this. As Apocalypse says in the replies, the screen has nothing to do with the performance. And while Eric kind of clarifies by saying that he's talking about the iPad Pro with the M3 chip, and how that compares with an equivalent MacBook. At least that's what I got from the reply. But anyways, in terms of performance, on paper, if you're comparing the M3 MacBook Air with the iPad Pro, they should be similar for the most part. But remember, macOS is a lot more flexible and uses the power of the M3 chip, whereas the iPad's likely going to be constrained. And screen-wise, if we do see OLED on the MacBook Air, like some reports have suggested, which, by the way, I don't believe, but anyways, if we do get it, it should be similar screen tech, except the iPad Pro should see 120Hz and the MacBook Air should stay at 60Hz. However, honestly, if I had to choose between these two products, I would instantly go for the MacBook Air as my sole computer because macOS is much better than iPadOS. So James says, I still believe the 12-inch MacBook will be the rumored white bezel slash white keyboard colorful MacBook we saw a few months ago. I think that's likely to replace the M1 MacBook Air in the lineup. So actually, yes, I do agree with this because there were so many prominent leaks regarding white bezels and a colorful design coming to the MacBook Air, but that did not pan out. And so giving it to a cheaper MacBook, like the 12-inch MacBook Revival would make sense. And it would put off some consumers because I'm sure some will hate the white bezels. And that's good news for Apple because ultimately they want to upsell consumers. And so yeah, this machine being colorful with white bezels 
could upsell consumers to higher-end MacBooks. But for the target demographic, which are students, I think the colourful design and the white bezels is going to be very attractive, and essentially it should be a modern version of the iBook. So at T Green says, I have the 12-inch MacBook with the Core i7 16 gigs in perfect condition. I'm a light user as an illustrator, iPad is my main device. I love this MacBook, still works very fast and snappy, was too expensive at launch, but I'm never selling it, so it doesn't matter. And yes, I was also a fan of the 12-inch MacBook. I think it had a ton of potential because the design was ahead of its time, it's portable, it's light. It basically was perfect apart from the awful Intel chips. And while I'm glad that you were happy with the performance, I know many weren't, especially for the high price. And yeah, Intel kinda underdelivered on their promises, which did ruin the potential of this machine. However, this light, thin, fanless form factor is now perfect in the era of Apple Silicon because Apple Silicon super efficient, it gives you incredible performance, and so yeah, just putting an M1 in this would make this one of the best entry-level laptops, and I'm hoping Apple does revive it. So at Goob Filmcast 4239 says, I think Apple's actually beating their Mac cell projections and also anticipates even better sales numbers when compared with Windows PCs. Windows machines will, of course, outsell Macs in overall units, but Apple has been gaining market share against their Windows competition each year since 2020, while Apple dominates phones, tablets, wearables. There is still plenty of room left for macOS to snatch tons of market share from x86 slash Windows. Now, yes, I completely agree with this. Apple has been on a winning streak with the Apple Silicon Macs, and it's definitely going to continue being the case. However, the best way Apple can capture most of the market, in my opinion, is, of course, to launch cheaper Macs. Specifically, a sub $1,000 MacBook. Now, of course, I know that Apple sells a $1,000 MacBook Air, but what I'm imagining is a $700 or $800 MacBook that, yes, has some compromises, but ultimately gives you that performance of the M1 chip at a much lower price. And there has been rumors regarding a 12-inch MacBook revival, so maybe that is going to be that affordable MacBook. And I think many students and light users are going to appreciate that. So at Marco says, the PCIe slots are used for professional video monitoring, grading slash color correction and network storage, and they should really be including two of these slots if they're not reducing the size of the Mac Pro down to a cube. And while now with this new report, I do think there is a chance we see these slots with the Mac Pro because it seems Apple's going to have a focus on upgradability with this, especially since they can't deliver with the M2 Extreme chip. Anyways, that's about it, but tell me your thoughts regarding this in the comments. Anyways, thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumors. Check out the video above on details regarding the new HomePods. And on that note, see ya peeps.